Hello everybody and welcome back. Today in this lecture we will study the practical illustrations of basics of financial instrument that is chapter number 12 unit number 1 of your ICI module. Let's begin with example number 1 page number 8. This is simply an example given if you know the financial asset definition properly then you will be able to identify and segregate which is financial asset and when it is not okay. For example uh, Investment in bonds and debenture. Since you have right to receive cash, it's a financial asset for you. Uh, loans and receivable, deposits given, trades uh, and other receivables, cash and cash equivalent, bank, investment in equity shares, okay. Perpetual debt instrument, that means uh, such instruments provide the contractual right to receive interest for indefinite time, okay. Therefore, it is financial asset. You have uh, right to receive cash. If you have right to receive cash, then it is a financial asset. On the other hand, the physical heads, uh, assets, okay, since you do not have right to receive cash from them because you will be using in the uh, business purpose, how much profits they earn, okay, and you have no intention to sell it and directly receive cash from it, okay, so therefore it is not your financial asset. Similarly, the right to use asset that is under lease is not your uh, financial asset. Intangible assets are not your financial asset. Prepaid expenses are not your financial asset as well as the advances given for the goods and services are not your financial asset. Okay. Next, illustration number one. Trade receivable. A limited makes sales of goods to customers on credit on for, for 45 days. The customer are entitled to earn a cash discount of 2% uh, if payment is made before 45 days and an interest at the rate 10% per annum is charged for any payments are made after 45 days okay so since you have right to receive cash contractual right to receive cash it's a financial asset for you okay next illustration number two deposits z limited the company makes sale of goods to customers on credit goods are carried in large containers for delivery to the dealer's destination okay all dealers are required to deposit a fixed amount of rupees 10,000. since this de deposit is a security deposit and this deposit will be returned okay after a specific uh, point of time or after satisfaction of particular condition the security deposit will be reversed off will be returned and since you have right to receive this security deposit back therefore the security deposit is your financial asset see since security deposits are receivable in cash you have right to receive them okay in cash therefore these are financial asset for you next Similar example is given for the financial liability. Example number two, loans payable or bank loan. Okay, so you have liability, you have contractual liability, obligation to pay cash. Okay, and therefore it is financial liability for you. Trade and other payables, bills payable, uh, deposits received. Okay, so you have to return them. Mandatory redeemable preference shares. So th since preference shares are shares and it should have been equity but as you know if they have any mandatory obligation that they have to pay okay redeem or any dividend is mandatory then that particular portion is tagged as financial liability okay so your mandatory redeemable preference shares are financial liability financial guarantee given financial liability okay illustration number three perpetual debt instrument Okay, as you know, you have learned about the compound instrument as well. The portion which does not have anything mandatory to be done, then the such mandatory outflow is not there, then you will be considering it as equity portion. Okay, and if a particular portion is there which is mandatory, uh, requires mandatory outflow, then it will be termed as financial liability. Okay, so perpetual debt instrument. A limited issues a bond at principal amount CU 1000 okay so principal is CU 1000 the term of bond requires annual payments in perpetuity at a state interest of at a stated interest of 8% okay the interest rate is 8% applied to the principal amount of CU 1000 assuming 8% to be the market rate of interest for the instrument when it was issued the issuer assumes a contractual obligation so for the issuer there is a contractual obligation to make to make payments and therefore for issuer it is a financial liability okay on the other hand for the receiver for the holder you can say okay it is a receivable okay and therefore it will be a financial asset 
See for holder since there is contractual obligation to make some payments and therefore it is right to receive for holder right to receive okay for issuer if you are talking about for issuer there is obligation to pay and therefore it is financial liability for the holder or you can say the receiver they have right to receive and therefore it is financial asset next illustration number 4 creditors for sale of goods a limited the companies make purchases of steel for its consumption in normal course of business the purchase terms provides for payment of goods at 30 days credit and interest payable at the rate 12 percent per annum for any delays below beyond credit period analyze whether the transaction leads to any financial instrument and if yes then what is the nature of that instrument okay so whether you're the credit sale okay so since you have fixed you have to pay fixed amount of cash you have obligation to pay cash and therefore it is a financial liability for you okay as you have made credit purchase that means purchase uh, for which you'll be making a payment afterwards so you have obligation to pay ma make a payment and therefore it will be termed as financial liability illustration number five contract for exchange on unfavorable conditions okay a limited if it is on unfavorable condition then it will be termed as liability okay financial liability a limited the company makes a borrowing for inr indian rupees uh, 100 lakhs from rbc bank with bullet repayment of inr 100 lakhs 10 lakhs and an annual interest rate of 12 percent okay so bulleted payment means you have to make a one-time payment instead of making installments and monthly and annual installments okay now the company defaults at the end of fifth year and consequently a rescheduling of the payment schedule is made beginning of the sixth year onwards the company is required to pay 13 lakh so there you have to pay 50, 10 lakh okay but instead of 10 lakh they are now charging you 13 lakh because of the default okay and normally if you add the interest at the rate 12 percent this means 10 lakh plus 12 percent plus 12 percent for the fifth year and the, for the sixth year okay two years default is there so it will be a particular amount now you have to compare whether this 13 lakh that you are paying okay is favorable is okay is lesser than could have been charged or is more if it is more and you have to pay more this means it is unfavorable for you you and therefore it will be termed as financial liability are you clear so here they are saying that now because of the default because of the breach you have to make a payment of 13 lakh instead of 10 lakh okay so here you'll be calculating does the above instrument mean definition of financial liability see how you'll calculate since you have contractual obligation to make a payment it is a financial liability next analyze the differential amount to be exchanged for one time settlement see if you would have charged 10 lakh plus 12 percent and plus 12 percent interest for the year five and six year okay then the amount would be 12 lakh 54,400 okay but they are asking you to pay 13 lakh so you they are charging higher amount okay the difference is 45,600 this 45,600 is extra liability since this is extra liability means you are exchanging or you are dealing into an unfavorable okay settlement and since it is unfavorable therefore it is financial liability for you this is extra liability why extra liability 10 lakh plus 12 percent plus 12 percent for fifth year and sixth year would have been 12 lakh 54,400 but they are asking you to pay 13 lakh so the difference extra they are charging is 45,600 extra outflow extra liability is unfavorable and therefore it is financial liability for you okay next example number three when a company proposes dividend in its board meeting no obligation arises just the proposal does not give rise to any sort of liability or obligation okay but in case if it is approved by the shareholders it is announced in the public then arises the obligation that they have to now pay the dividend as and when uh, as per the agreement as per the announcement okay and within a stipulated time are you clear so the proposal does not give rise to any obligation but as soon as the requisite approvals are done uh, the requisite announcements are done you have to then make a mandatory obligation payment okay of the dividend so then it arises a contractual liability 
or financial liability okay so when a company proposes a dividend in the board meeting no obligation arises because it becomes payable only post approval by the shareholders in the annual general meeting but here however when the dividend is approved by the shareholder in annual general meeting the company has taken an obligation to distribute the dividend to its shareholder and hence its contractual obligation meeting the definition is financial liability okay afterwards after approval it becomes financial liability okay next illustration number 6 preferred shares with non cumulative dividend silver limited issued irredeemable preference shares this means you have no mandatory obligation to pay the principal amount of preference shares okay with a face value of 10 and a premium of 90 these shares carry dividend at the rate 8% per annum however dividend is paid only when silver limited declares dividend on equity shares this means the payment of dividend is not mandatory obligation it is at your discretion whenever you are announcing dividends for the equity which is made on willing basis on voluntary and discretion basis your the dividend paid for the preference shares also is discretionary okay so if the principal payment is not mandatory if the dividend payment is not mandatory this means these have characteristics of not a liability but of equity therefore this preference shares will be termed as equity will be classified as equity okay so they carry a dividend uh, which is irredeemable so no obligation to pay cash and the instrument shall be settled in its own equity shares okay and therefore it should be termed as meets the definition of equity therefore it meets the definition of equity okay because both are not mandatory no mandatory payment no mandate tari obligation or payments whatever okay both for the principal as well as for the dividend portion now illustration number 7 non derivative contract to be settled in own equity share instrument okay so if variable then financial liability if number of shares are fixed the consideration is fixed then it will be termed as equity a limited sorry a limited invest in compulsorily convertible preference shares issued by its subsidiary b limited at rupees 1000 each 10 rupees face value and 990 is the premium under the terms of the instrument each ccps that is compulsorily convertible preference shares into one equity share of b limited at the end of 5 years such ccps carry dividend at the rate 12% per annum payable only when declared at the discretion of b limited okay so here you are converting into shares firstly and the dividend is discretionary so the dividend portion is also equity and you are converting into uh, one equity share of b limited okay since the conversion is fixed number of share and the dividend is also discretionary these both pay shows that it is equity non cumulative dividends means not to be uh, not required to be paid okay and therefore no contractual obligation to pay the dividend and there is fixed number of equity share and therefore it should be considered as equity instrument if here the exchange would have been the if here the conversion would have been in variable number of shares then you would have considered this as financial liability the same concept we have discussed in our uh, notes part as well okay next illustration number 8 Settlement and variable number of shares. Target Limited took a borrowing from Z Limited for rupees ten lakh. Z Limited enters into an agreement with Target Limited for settlement of the loan against issue of a certain number of equity shares of Target Limited whose value equals to ten lakh. For this purpose, fair value per share to determine the total number of equity shares to be issued shall be determined based on the market price of the share of Target Limited. at a future date okay upon settlement of the contract evaluate the this under definition of financial instrument so you are settling into the amount is fixed okay but the number of shares are not yet fixed because it will be dependent upon the fair value per share which needs to be determined okay to determine the number of equity shares since the number of equity shares is variable okay is variable 
this means you have to record it as financial liability okay next a summary is given just to make you understand that when this indias is applicable or you can say when the it will be considered as financial instrument whenever you have so since the basic we are talking about this that whenever you have a separate standard governing that particular transaction that you won't, then you won't be applying this particular uh, standard okay are you clear because in the starting itself we decide what is the scope and what is out of the scope okay so here for example interest in subsidiary associate and joint venture these are covered in india's 27 and therefore it won't be considered as financial instrument rights and obligation under lease it is covered under india's 116 lease and therefore it will won't be considered as financial instrument employers right and obligations under employee benefit plans and therefore there is separate standard they won't be considered as financial instrument okay rights and obligations under of insurance contract business combination okay these all have their own specific standards and therefore they won't be considered as financial instrument okay you just need to read it once next example number 4 ABC Limited enters into a contract to buy 100 tons of cocoa beans at 1000 per ton for delivery in 12 months. On the settlement date the market price for cocoa beans is is 1500 per ton. If the contract cannot be settled net in cash, okay? And this contract is entered for delivery of cocoa beans in line with ABC Limited's expected purchase and usage requirement. Then own use exemption applies. It is said that if they are applying just to take the margin benefit or settling on the net basis, then they won't be applied for own use requirements. Okay, but if they are purchasing for use purpose, see if they are entered for the co delivery of cocoa beans and are expected to purchase and usage requirements. they have uh, they have also intentions to use it and therefore own use exemptions can be applied in such a case the contract is considered to be executory contract outside the scope of indias 109 and hence shall not be accounted as a derivative it is said that since it has its own value because you are getting delivery against it okay and it is uh, having its own value the contract is having its own value and therefore it will not be termed as derivative it will not be termed as financial instrument and recorded as per financial instrument okay this is executory contract why executory contract because this will be termed under indias 115 okay where you will treating uh, contracts with customer under okay uh, revenue with cust uh, cust contracts with customer okay there you will be identifying this what is executory contract a executory contract is a contract which is uh, not performed on both parties or is equally unperformed on behalf of both the parties okay they are e equally performed or equally unperformed to the same extent on behalf of both the parties okay these are executory contract so this was about the basic concepts of financial instrument we'll head towards next uh, chapter okay uh, till then take care be safe stay